Um, it's one thing for us as staff to kind of tell you about the course, but I think the best people to tell you about the course are actually those who are actually on the course. And so I've got my good friend beside me, Johnny Matthews. Johnny, you're very welcome tonight. Um, so I'm going to grill Johnny for a little uh, a minute or two here and see what he has to say about the course. So Johnny, thanks for coming in tonight. We know you're a busy man, but we, we appreciate you taking the time to come and speak to us. Johnny, maybe the best thing to do would be just to tell everyone at home um, just a wee bit, a wee bit of information about yourself, who you are and um, kind of what you do and, and what brought you here to the Bible College. Yeah, so I'm uh, Johnny Matthews. I'm from Kargava. I live there with my wife, Laura. Our daughter Betty, who's 15 months ish, 16 months maybe, wow. um, and then another one on the way in June. Wow. So um, life is busy. Um, I work for Kurgavan Youth for Christ. Mm -hmm. um, I also help lead a church called Car Kurgavan, um, well, just on the outskirts of Kurgavan. Um, and I suppose what brought me to Belfast Bible College, good question. Um, I I grew up, like, so I left school with no qualifications mm -hmm. um, and became a Christian at about 19, 20 um, and tried to repeat my GCSEs and kept failing them. So I quit because it was costing too much money. Mm -hmm. um, so then I thought I'd give up on education, but then when I done an internship um, in my church for two years, um, there was a youth work course that was, um, you could sort of get in through the back door. It was like a degree. Mm -hmm. So I got in through, like, scripting through the back door. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and I suppose that introduction to studying just sort of like gave me a bit of a hunger for it, mm. if I can say that. Fire in your belly kind yeah, of yeah. yeah, kind of like first time in my life I enjoyed reading a book. Amazing. You yeah. know, so yeah. um, it kind of gave me a hunger for it. And I think when I became a Christian, I didn't really understand, I didn't really know much about the Bible mm. and what Christians were meant to do. Yeah. Um, and I remember thinking, well, I'll, I'll just start reading my Bible and see what happens. And so when I was about 19, 20, I started to read the Bible, um, and there was always a want to know more, like mm -hmm. from what I was reading with face value. Um, and so I done a youth work degree with applied theology. So it's pretty much a Christian youth work degree with mm -hmm. a tiny wee bit of theology. Yeah, um, yeah. And um, so when I graduated from that, I thought I'd never study again because it was quite stressful. But then a friend, of my, well, a family member was like, you ever, you ever think about doing a master's? And I kind of laughed, but I had thought about doing a master's. Yeah, I, yeah. I read about this course and I was like, I would love to do something like this, um, but was in a position to pay for it financially. Mm -hmm. So then my family member was like, well, if I help cover the fees, will you do it? Mm -hmm. So I was like, well, it's now never like, because if someone offers to pay for your fees, like mm -hmm. why not? So, so what you're telling me is you left school with no GCSEs, uh -huh. but you're sitting here Mm. almost finished your master's is that right yeah what an incredible story and, yeah. and testament to, to, to god johnny and how god's moved in your mm. life but um i suppose there's so many questions i could ask you you know, from that but uh, we'll stick to what we've planned here so why you kind of cover this as well why, why did you choose to study the, the ma course um so i uh so I, aside from like the family member obviously paying my fees mm. i just um when the opportunity came up I suppose what you said before, I was like, you know, not I didn't really want to do it like for myself in a sense, mm -hmm. but it was like, you know, a guy, I work with young people who underachieve mm -hmm. and who are marginalized and um, on, the, on the margins in Kargavan. And so I felt like doing a course like this um, could be a testimony for them mm -hmm. that like, just because they feel now doesn't mean they're going to feel for the rest of their life. And yeah. so I was written off from education before I could talk. Yeah, yeah. So I think, when this opportunity came up, I was like, well, why not? Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I was really scared to do it. And I thought I would fail, but mm -hmm. I remember thinking the same thing with the first degree. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it was like, if I really applied myself, then I'm sure I could do it. And then when I was reading up in the course and like um, watching videos about it, and mm -hmm. I was like, you know, the support structure seems really sound here. And mm -hmm. I think that if I was to do it, I would be sort of looked after. I know it's an independent learning course, mm -hmm. but there is a good support structure. And I think that was what, really like push me over the line because I, I assumed wrongly that you would just be left to your own device mm -hmm. and that kind of scared me a bit. Um, so there's, a good, there's a good setup with the course. Really good setup, yeah, really good setup. You, you, you make them with lectors and that kind of thing? Mm -hmm. is that what you're oh, I, yep, and um, everyone is just an email away, you know, yeah, and you, yeah. there's never a stupid question. And I just really appreciate something like that, especially for someone who doesn't, who doesn't mm -hmm. I feel like I still feel like an outsider in a sense yeah. because of the, I think it's too good to be true sometimes. But then I suppose on the other side of that, 
Um, as I said, like the context I work and live in, mm -hmm. like I work where I live and I do church where I live and ministry mm -hmm. where I live and Kirkgavin's my home and it's such a diverse mm -hmm. community, mostly nationalist. Um, you know, a lot of people I work with and uh, they come to our church are involved in organized crime and LGBT mm -hmm. and not like a tyranny or anything, <laughs> but um, but it's just uh, in terms of diversity, you've got yeah, working yeah. class, you've got lower class, you've got people living in poverty, people who aren't. And I just, the older I get, the more questions I have about my own theology. Yeah, and I just yeah. felt like my theology is being t tested so much. I really need to understand where, I really need to understand where I stood in cer certain situations yeah. and how I can make the Bible and theology applicable to people who are selling drugs and people who are taking drugs, you know what I mean? Johnny, yeah, you know, yeah. so I get like, that like, so I can make it in a, in, in a sense understandable for anybody and everybody. Brilliant. I'll maybe pick up on that, that theme in, in another mm -hmm. question in a minute or two, but I suppose you've said yourself, you know, you're a husband, you're mm -hmm. a dad, a new dad to be soon, um, a church planter mm -hmm. and a youth co or a YFC coordinator. Uh -huh. So I think it's fair to say that you've got your hands full. <laughs> so how did you find someone that you, how did you find that all the studying, you know, while juggling all, all the other commitments that you have in your life? Yeah. Um, I think I think a good wife. <laughs> I think Laura <laughs> Laura's amazing. Um Hopefully she's watching it. Hopefully she's watching this. I hope so too. Um <laughs> but yeah, I think it's just like so for me, like you, you need to find out well, how you work mm. and how you function. So I'm a morning person. Yeah. I'm useless in the evening. Like yeah. I'll do I'm a youth worker and I'll do programmes in the evening, but it's just really hanging at me on people. There's not mm. much brain power behind it. Because like I suppose youth work is a, is a, is a gift for me, mm -hmm. so it's quite yeah. natural. Um, so I'm a morning person, so I through the week I'm up at half four or five in the morning. Wow. Um, I go to bed before ten, like you know, yeah, I'm lucky yeah. from in bed past ten. Uh, yeah. And you know, I'm because I know I'm so productive in the morning. Mm -hmm. Any all my best writing is done at that time. Okay. Yeah. And so knowing that, that I'm a morning person, um, then I then block out mornings and like days, not really past after three, like, but okay, yeah. you know, and um, where I will, like, I'm like, right, I'm gonna do work. That's your and study I'll, time. And I put, put it, I put it in my calendar. Brilliant. Yeah. But before all that, I make sure everything's prioritized. So like you said about being a dad mm. and a husband, like all <laughs> that stuff is in my calendar. Yeah. So if you look at my calendar, I've got date night with Laura. Brilliant. You know, I've got, Brilliant. You know, Thursday is Betty's day because mm -hmm. Laura's in work and I get Betty all day to mm -hmm. myself. And um, and then so everything, even family meals and everything is in my calendar. And mm -hmm. then when I study, I make sure it's in a different color. Yeah. And it's like it's like, it's like like something I can't miss. So as okay. I said, if it was a Monday night, for example, someone's like, do you want to do something on Monday night? Because no, I can't, I'm busy because mm -hmm. I know I'm studying. Um, Who'd have thought Johnny Matthews ten years ago would have a calendar? Yeah, <laughs> my dad laughs because he says I replaced my beer fridge with a bookcase. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, like <clears throat> understanding how you work and prioritizing, yeah. um, and even not just leaving it. Like people were, in my first degree were so guilty of leaving at the last minute because yeah, I was yeah. so scared of failing. I used to leave myself a month for each right assignment, yeah. and I think it just carried on on that discipline. So good. Like the last two weeks, no matter what way you structure your week, it's going to be stressful. Yeah. Like just accept that. Yeah. Like you're going to lose your social life yeah. close to the deadlines, and that you have to you have to accept that. But it's temporary, yeah. you know. Um. But you know, I'm always reading something. Like I've read the question. Mm, I'm looking at the sources. I'm like, okay. So then, whenever I've got a free hour or something, I'm always reading something. Good. You know. Good. Or listening to it. <laughs> I might I might come back to that again later on in another question. But I suppose one of the things I want to talk about now, Johnny, is um. You know, you're in your second year of this course, mm -hmm. all right? So you've covered an awful lot of content. Charlie told us there a little while ago what the <coughs> course yeah. uh, content is all about. Um, what would you say are the main lessons that you're taking away? I mean, I know it's maybe a hard question on the first it question, is. but there's, there's an awful lot. But what um, are the main things that you're kind of taking away with you from this Masters? I think, like, because you can be here all day of what, I've, what I feel like I've learned, yeah. you know, from each module. Um, but I think to make it more broad, I suppose, and like, I think in terms of theology in itself, mm -hmm. um, like understanding a deeper sense of theology. So I had mm -hmm. my theology and because I was always reading, you know, and I was like, whenever I was in my first degree, I was always reading, trying to like, and I, I, knew, I would notice things and I like mm -hmm. delving deeper. But I think with this course, it deconstructed me. Good, and I felt that that was important. 
Yeah. Um, I feel like everyone needs to get deconstructed with a theology at some point, mm. and like time and time again. Um, and I used to be scared of that. I used to be scared of people challenging my theology because I thought what I, where I stood was right. Yeah. yeah. But like, one big learning curve for this course is I realised that I've I've I'm like I have no idea, mm, <laughs> you know. Um, and the like studying theology isn't just a two year course. Yeah. It's it's the rest of your life. Yeah. Um, which excites me a bit, but you have to, I think, when you're in a class full of people from different backgrounds, different theologies, different mm -hmm. churches, um, you have to really humble yourself. Yeah. It's just hard to be like, I could be wrong in this mm -hmm. certain issue, I could be wrong, my theology could be off here. And um, I suppose my, big, my biggest learning curve is that you learn from everybody, That's regardless good, yeah. of their walk, or walk, walk from life or yeah. um, walk of life. It's um, not just about the lecture at the front, it's about no. the collectively as a class yeah. together. Yeah, yeah. You feel it's good to, yeah. uh, to learn from each other. And yeah. I like that idea of deconstructing, yeah. you're deconstructing something yeah. in order to construct something else. Because some, some of my beliefs haven't changed really, yeah. Yeah. but I think for me it was being deconstructed in a way and in a safe environment yeah. where you can then reconstruct something constructive. Very good. <laughs> Do you yeah. get what I mean? <laughs> I get what you mean. Um, and like w w within all that, it helps me then to, okay, this is... An, you know, when you're, you, you're, you have to be critical. You have to yes. be critical in yourself and your writing and you have yeah. to be critical thinking. I think it's one thing I've learned the most is how to mm -hmm. not be like in a negative sense, but yeah. in a positive sense. Yeah. Like understand the blind spots of my own argument mm -hmm. and my own theology. And actually, instead of, you know, trying to use theology as a weapon against to prove something wrong, yeah. Yeah. now I see it as something to find common ground with people. You know, people who don't believe or think the same way I do. Yeah. I sort of like look at my theology as I'm going to find a common ground with them. Yeah. So we can move forward together. So I think in all that, that's that's the main learning curve. Mm -hmm. I can tell you of different subjects and like mm -hmm. different like ways of reading the Bible that I've learned. And but again, we'll be here all day. But mm -hmm. I think my overarching learning is is that good. That, that critical awareness and critical analysis is mm -hmm. a major part of the of the the, the course. And yeah, I'm delighted you said that. So one last one last uh, thing, and then uh, one last question then is, so you're coming to the end of of um, of the course, the two years. How are you, Johnny, going to take what you've learned over these last two years, right, and take it into into Youth for Christ, and mm. take it into your your environment in your workplace and your your church community, the church plant that you mm. have? How do you take what you've learned here and and apply that then into the context where you find yourself? Yeah, I was thinking this about this question on the way up. Like I see, whenever you have the right tools to study mm. the Bible in a really like effective way, yeah. like it just like. You know, when you when you start, when you take these tools and everything you learn in this course, and you reread the Gospels, mm -hmm. it's like re-reading it for the first time again. Yeah. And so for me, it gives me like a, you know, when you read it in that new light, like it gives you a, a greater desire to share it. it you know, not in like a, you know, stand on the street corner, yeah. but just sitting with the people like you're working with one to one, and just feeling like here, we do hear this. Yeah. We hear this first story, like we hear this good news, mm -hmm. um, and it just sort of helped me simplify it a bit better. Even yeah, though yeah. theology is complicated, yeah. um, and it is, but I feel like um, what I will bring into my workplace is actually the simplicity of it. Yeah. Um, and um, you know, again, I said before, like I work with some of the most marginalised mm -hmm. people in my community, and I'm friends with some of the most marginalised people in my community, yeah. um, and I spend loads of time with them, and so. It's like taking what I've learned and like how do I apply that to them? Yes. You know, and it's um, as I said before, it's like making theology, theology um, accessible and applicable to mm. people of all yeah. um, walks of life. And I feel like I don't want to. So I think I don't want to like you know I don't want people just to believe what I believe. Yes. Yeah. I want to equip people to like study and research it and find the answers for themselves and yeah. seek God themselves in the scriptures with the right tools so they mm. can come to their own conclusions instead of trying to create. Like Johnny disciples, you yes, know, trying good. to create, you know, yeah. trying to make disciples of yeah. Jesus. Brilliant, Johnny. So you, what you're really saying is you can take what you learn in this course. I know you're involved in, uh, in church planting and, and youth for Christ, but what you can take in the course, you can be applicable in any kind of work, mm -hmm. work sphere. You know, helping people to understand how they share Jesus uh, in and share the gospel in the context that they find themselves in. Mm -hmm. So that, that's brilliant. Johnny, thank you so much for joining us. Don't run away because you know, we might need you later on for some questions that we're gonna um, that we're gonna have. But thank you for now. Uh, we really appreciate your time. As I say, you are a busy man, but thank you for, for sharing you. that. And hopefully that's, that's really helped some of you at home tonight um, considering uh, doing the, the MA course. Hopefully 
Um, Johnny's uh, experience has maybe helped you to kind of figure out um, that this is something that you uh, maybe want to do in the future.